Hi, I'm Nick Moffitt and welcome to my book talk. Today I want to tell you about a biography that I read that far exceeded my expectations. It's called Go Ahead in the Rain, Notes to a Tribe Called Quest. The reason I picked this book is because I've always had an interest in A Tribe Called Quest. They're a hip hop group from the early 90s and I've always liked their music. Whenever I heard it, I always thought that is the epitome of cool right there. But uh, they always felt like they were a little out of my depth, like they were a little too cool for me. I know that doesn't totally make sense, but sometimes your taste and what you want your taste to be don't always line up. And for me, it might have been that they came out in the early 90s or they were pioneers to a really interesting, unique sound. But for whatever reason, it just didn't feel like they... Um, they were totally out of, it felt like they were a little above my head. Um, but I read this book uh, because I wanted to know more about them. I picked it off the shelf because it looked interesting and it was it seemed like the perfect opportunity to get to know this band that I wanted to know more about. And like I said, it exceeded my expectations. First, I want to tell you a little bit about Tribe Called Quest if you don't know about them. Uh, basically, they have three main members. There's Q-Tip. He's a rapper, but the main producer. Their sound, it's kind of his vision. It was his idea. He started the group. He pushed them forward. There's Fife Dog, who's uh, another rapper, and he's he's kind of he's kind of the cool one. He has all the best lines. And then there's Ali Shaheed Muhammad, who's the DJ and producer. So he spins the records in the back during the live performances, and uh, helps Q-Tip make the make the sampling. Uh, so they pioneered jazz fusion in hip hop. Um, they created a peaceful hip hop sound, um, very much of their time, but also of the future. No one else was making music like them before. And it's a really special sound because at the time, a lot of rap was either really poppy and bombastic or violent and based around gangster culture. Um, Tribal Quest was doing their own thing that was based in love and um, history. So um, this book, it's written by a guy named Hanif Adu Akib, who uh, is a poet, and he puts his own personal voice into the biography. Um, he tells the story of A Tribe Called Quest as a group, so it doesn't go into a lot of the detail of their childhoods or how they grew up, but it tells the collective story of the three of them in chronological order, which I feel like a lot of biographies are obligated to do. So it talks about how they grew up in Queens, uh, the recording of their first album, which apparently was hard for Fife Dog to stay in the studio for. It talks about Q-Tip's vision, um, how he sampled music. It goes into a lot of detail on the sampling process, how Q-Tip had thousands of vinyl records, and he would uh, go through and meticulously pick out the precise sounds that he wanted. And then it goes into the process, the technical process of of sampling and what that looks like and why people don't really do it that much anymore. Um, he talks about the genius of their first three albums, um, People's Instinctive Travels, The Low End Theory, and Midnight Marauders, and how those are classics for rap. But then it talks about how the fourth and fifth albums, Beats, Rhymes, and Love, and The Love Movement, aren't nearly as acclaimed and why that is. And part of it is because hip hop was changing. Hip hop changes very fast for what's popular. and Tribe Called Quest not only didn't know their place in it anymore, but they also were kind of falling apart as a collective unit. One thing that's really special about this book, though, is that it's not just about A Tribe Called Quest and their history, but it's also about the history of, of hip-hop and music. It talks a lot about the jazz roots and where jazz came from in America. He talks about West Coast rap and how Dr. Dre and N.W.A. was doing the same sort of sampling, but doing it in a very different aesthetic and how his how N.W.A. was about fighting the system. And again, Tribal Quest is more about love. He talks about how rap evolves over time and how quickly it changes. And it talks about um, the West Coast versus East Coast rivalry and how that boiled over with some really violent historic events like when Tupac was killed and the Notorious B.I.G. was killed right afterward and how a lot of people thought rap might just go away because it was based in violence. But there was a Tribe Called Quest right in the middle of it doing their own thing that was all about love. 
and connection and history and um, it really uh, how it really established that there's something special in the history of music. Um, another thing that Hanif does is he puts his own taste, his own voice into into um, into the book. He writes personally. He tells his own personal history relating to the band. He writes about how he had all of their albums on cassette tape and he would listen to it on his Walkman on the bus ride on the way to school. He writes about their breakup and how devastating it was for him. And when he does that, he writes actually letters to each member of the group and they're like personal letters. He writes about why he thinks they broke up to them and um, explores the concept of falling out of love with someone or viewing them as a brother and needing to step away because you want that love to still survive. And in this, he explores the themes of the group and of and of their music so he talks a lot about their love and brotherly love and the love of the love of musicians and artists and how we appreciate them and how we use them in hard times just the way that the way that Hanif writes makes it informative and interesting and engaging like he he connects you directly through his love of the band to the band's history and what makes them great you learn a lot a lot you learn a, you learn a lot about them but you also um care in a really special way because hanif is so good at writing about them um i want to uh read a section of this book um but i want to tell you give it a little bit of setup first so one thing that actually happened that's really sad for a Tribe Called Quest history is that Fife Dog passed away. So he died in 2016 um, with complica complications re relating to diabetes. And uh, But before he died, he actually reconnected with the group and they went into the studio and started recording a new album in secret. No one knew that they were going to put out a new album. And then after he died, he had already put down all of his vocals for most of the tracks. And so the album came out in 2016, um, the same week as the presidential election. Um, so the chapter where he s starts talking about when that album came out and he goes into detail on the album, he doesn't actually start talking about Fife's death. He doesn't start by talking about the album itself. He starts by writing about Leonard Cohen, who is another musician, but he's not a rapper. He's a folk artist. And... Leonard Cohen also died the same week as the 2016 election. It's kind of surreal, but Leonard Cohen knew his death was coming. He was old in age, and he put out an album that year called You Want It Darker. And it's a lot about um, exploring the themes of what it's like to die and leave something behind. And to Leonard Cohen, he was leaving a, he was kind of leaving a ghost whispering in your ear about the process of going into the afterlife and it was kind of a magical thing but so Hanif writes about that but then transitions into talking about the album and I'm just going to read a little section of it right here it's impossible to speak of this album without also speaking of the time it arrived in the second song we the people is powered by its mocking scathing hook all you black folks you must go all you mexicans you must go and all you poor folks you must go muslims and gays boy we hate your ways so all you bad folks you must go it's the voice of america turned in on itself the voice that many of us pretended was at a distance until it was a consistent and low drone until it had begun activating the most violent among us from the highest office in the country it's, a jar it's jarring to hear a sentiment made that plain in a week when the country vomited on its own shirt and then looked around and asked who made the mess. It says what we've known all along, even as people now wring their hands eager for the new art that marginalized people will create, black folks have been creating with their backs against the wall for years, telling the future, speaking what is coming to the masses that aren't eager to hear it until what's coming actually arrives looming over them. It struck me in the moment that critically dissecting an album felt even smaller than it usually does. The times are urgent, and I know nothing but going back to what I love. 
but music still feels tiny and disposable. I think, though, that perhaps we will cling to our art and learn to truly love our artists. I am not okay, and even I, even if I were to find the time to be okay, there are too many people I love who are not okay, and I feel that weight on top of my own. And yet, with the world cr still crumbling under its various political ills, and everyone covered our own respective heaviness, the Tribe Called Quest rose again, and they were also not okay. You can hear it in the album's gentler moments. The songs, where Q-Tip is largely alone, like the somber and sparse Melatonin, where he opens his first verse, the understudy for the star, the show must go on. The show, it seems, ends here, and we didn't even deserve for it to take us this far. Earlier that year, I didn't think I wanted another Tribe Called Quest album. Then Fife died, and I want another Tribal Quest album more than anything. Then it arrived, and it was even greater than I could have asked for. The heroic and brilliant Tribe Called Quest, who almost certainly have nothing left to give us now. The greatest rap group of all time, who returned in a week when the world caught fire to give us one final everlasting gift. It's one way to keep a beloved ghost in our ears no matter what uncertain hell awaits. So I just found that section really inspiring, and I found this book really inspiring. Um, I, I would recommend this book to a lot of people. I would recommend this book to anyone who has an interest in music history, a high schooler who likes rap but wants to know more of where it came from, and honestly, I would recommend it to anyone who's looking to be inspired. Um, inspires me to listen to their music, inspires me to listen to the music they sampled, it inspires me to listen to other hip hop that came out around that time. And on top of all of it, it inspires me to tell the people that I love how much I love them because that's really what this is about. It's about love and connection and what art can do to us. And this book really captures not just the Tribal Quest history, which it really, it really does. You learn a lot about Tribe Called Quest, but it also captures what their music makes people makes people feel. So, thanks for listening to my book talk. This once again is "Go Ahead in the Rain: Notes to a Tribe Called Quest," and you can find it at any local bookstore or the library. So, thanks for listening. Have a great day.